Welcome to Digging Deeper, Make Creativity Your Business Advantage. I'm your host, Jason Falls. Today on the program, we're going to have the coolest man in social media with us. David Armano is here. You may remember him from a fantastic design PR and digital future blog called Logic Plus Emotion back when blogs were a thing. He spent the better part of the last decade at Edelman. He just wrapped up a stint as the interim CMO at Suzy, which is a market research platform. And he has an interesting outlook on where we are in our digital evolution. He says, a renaissance is upon us, social audio, NFTs, subscription-based content, I have all kinds of questions and all kinds of skepticism. So we're going to have a fun conversation today. We're going to find out more about what he means about that renaissance today on the show. I also have a great workshop for you aspiring authors to tell you about. I'm part of an upcoming event called the Journey to Success Summit, which is a two-day workshop to help anyone understand how to plan, pitch, write, and publish your own book. More on that later in the show. And before we dig into dig digging deeper this week, dig 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 yep, apparently I haven't had enough caffeine today. Uh, before we dig into digging deeper this week, uh, we have made a decision on moving the start time of the program. Beginning next week, Digging Deeper's live stream will move to an 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific showtime. As you know, we've been trying to account for our other time zone friends and guests. And so, of course, David's probably growling at me right now because he's in the central time zone and he had to get up early for this. But uh, next week, we're changing it. Uh, while we don't wish to make it more difficult for folks here on the East Coast, uh, or those who are early risers in the central time zone to join us. The feedback from you and the various stakeholders was that a later start time would be good for everyone. So starting next week, you can plan to join us live at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Of course, the episodes are available both as an audio podcast and a YouTube subscription where the live stream replays can be had anytime. So if you are concerned, you may not be able to join us next week. Stop what you're doing right now and either subscribe to the podcast episodes uh, at cornet.online slash digging deeper, where you can find the links to the Spotify's and all that good stuff over there. Uh, or uh, if you prefer to subscribe via YouTube, you can jump over to cornet.online slash dig deep, and that will take you to the YouTube channel where you can subscribe so that you get a notification when we have a new video uh, and you can watch those on demand as opposed to joining us live. But we do hope uh, that you can join us live in the future. Again, next week, we're going to start the show at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, that'll be on Tuesdays, of course, but we promise the same great content will still be great on demand uh, or on the podcast uh, live. Looking over into the chat already, Chip Griffin says, good morning. Good morning, Chip. Uh, everybody else who's uh, looking in today on the show, jump in and say hello. If you have questions, of course, we would welcome those as well. Now, this is normally uh, the point on the show where I bring you a, a message from one of our show sponsors, but for another week or so, the support for Digging Deeper is provided by my new book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand is available now from Entrepreneur Press. You can find it in bookstores everywhere, but uh, I've got a special place to go online and get a discount for those of you listening on the uh, audio section of the show. I've got that discount for you in just a second, so get ready to jot down a note. Uh, for those of you watching, you can see the URL and the code on the screen, but I'll get to that in a second for the audio listeners. Winfluence the book is not just a strategic blueprint to help you enjoy smart influence marketing strategies for your business or clients, but it explains why our common perception of influencer marketing is all wrong. I take you through how to rethink and reframe the concepts to turn influencer marketing into influence marketing, broaden the perspective and open new avenues of leveraging influential people online and off line to grow your business. Now, here's the special URL and discount code just for you, the Digging Deeper audience. You can go to jason.online slash buywinfluence. That's jason.online slash buywinfluence. That takes you to the book on the Entrepreneur Press bookstore. Buy the book and use the code FALLS20, all caps, F-A-L-L-S, 2 and get 20% off the retail price. That address again is jason.online slash buywinfluence. Leave a review of the book after you read it on Amazon because select reviews will be read here on the show. This week's review, uh, kind of bringing it full circle, uh, someone that I met the same time that I met uh, David Armano for the first time, Drew McClellan from the Agency Management Institute, uh, wrote on Amazon, this book reframes the idea of influencer marketing and moves it from a six-figure celebrity pay play to a much more down-to-earth execution that will drive sales as opposed to vanity metrics. 
Jason has packed the book with examples, templates, and tools so everyone can execute on these ideas. Five stars as well. Thank you, Drew. I appreciate that review a lot. And Drew is a veteran agency guy. So for those of you at agencies out there, that's a, a very good recommendation to follow if I do say so myself. Uh, actually, if Drew said so himself, not me. Um, we do need more Amazon reviews, folks, so please head over there and leave your honest feedback on Amazon. Select reviews will be read here on the show. And yes, if I get a one star and it's fair and the criticism is fair, I'm reading it. I'm not going to read a troll. But if somebody gives me a one star and it's I'm going to read it on the air, I will do that because I love that feedback, too. Winfluence Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand is available now. Go to jason.online slash buy Winfluence. Use the code FALLS20 today for the discount. If you do want to go straight to Amazon for some reason, you can go there and search, or the short URL is jason.online slash get the book. So there's that. Get that out of the way. Uh, if you are dialing into the live broadcast on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter, you can jump in the comments section there or hit at reply on Twitter to the video and ask questions or interact with us here on the show. Jump in the comments, say hello, ask your question of me or David. I'll do my best to surface it so that we can answer uh, as we go along. Just ch checking the plumbing over here to make sure everything's running. I'm getting all green lights from Restream so everything looks good. And I can see Chip is already jumping in. Does on demand mean I can make demands? Absolutely not, Chip. You do not get to make demands. You can just sit there and troll, but you don't get to you don't get to dictate what's happening. So there's that. Okay. I remember the first time uh, that I met David Armano. Uh, we were at an event in New York City in 2008, I think, and I happened yes. to be standing with my back to him on a cruise ship going around Manhattan. I realized that and tweeted that I just felt more cool because I was so close to him. Uh, and it's I feel even more cool having him on the show today. Good morning, David. How are you, my friend? Good morning. Your memory is excellent because I remember I remember uh, that event that was Blogger Social 08. I was actually just talking to Ann Hanley about that. We were, we were texting the other day and reminiscing about um, uh, the veterans, the seasoned veterans. We're not going to say the O word. We're the seasoned <laughs> veterans. Seasoned yeah. like like That's a steak. seasoning. Is that what you're saying? That's <laughs> seasoning. <laughs> it's like a little paprika and a little salt. I mean, that's what it is. The salt and pepper in the beer. You have a little more than me, but I'm getting there. And um, that's the season part. And yes, yeah, I remember that tweet. And I remember you saying that. It was pretty funny. <laughs> it was. Well, you were super cool. But, I mean, you're super cool now. <laughs> you, you, you were, you were super cool back then because you always wore shades and always had on a leather jacket. And I was like, this guy's like the fonds of social media. It's pretty cool. I still have I have many leather jackets I do and and um, and sometimes they're functional because I do ride a motorcycle so it's that's just, true it's so, so, yeah there you go you got the whole Fonzie package going on now speaking <laughs> speaking of stuff you still have check this yeah. out huh look at that yes there look it is <laughs> I, and I remember shopping for that and I remember I was like oh it falls the bullet holes. Yeah. So the, I was, this was, I don't know, 2009 or something at All Hat. David is one of the sort of co-founders of All Hat, which was a charity function that a bunch of us did for several years at South by Southwest. And we all went to uh, Allen Boots uh, at, together. We all went there to buy boots and things. And I was like on the porch, not even walked in yet. And I hear Armano scream from inside, Falls, I found your hat. And he shows me this bad boy with bullet holes in yeah. the brim and the top. And I took one look at it and I said, that's mine. Now, yep. as everybody who knows me knows, my head has grown. I have a big head now <laughs> or a bigger head now. So I can't quite get in it the way I used to, but I still have I it. love it. <laughs> Fun times. And no, Chip, I was not the naked cowboy. Um, that's a disgusting thing to think about. I love about. that we have a ship. I can't yeah. see him. Hey, Chip. Chip is here. He's, he's over in the comment section. He likes to troll us on YouTube, which is fun like having him here. Okay. Um, David, uh, you have a piece on your uh, Substack newsletter, which indicates that we're primed for a renaissance of sorts in the digital space, much yeah. like the social explosion that happened after the recession of 2008. Take us through why you think that and, and what are the indicators that might lead you in that direction? Sure. Uh, so, it was really just connecting a few dots. I mean, obviously with, with COVID, um, if you are a marketer or just really in the business world and or just observant, if you've just been looking at things this past year, um, 
one of the things that really stands out and 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 it's a little overused but uh everything has been accelerated i mean jason you work in digital right and so because we're, we're on our screens more we're um ordering in more we're doing all the things that is enabled by digital so so for lack of a better phrase digital transformation has been accelerated and that's true and you are seeing like the tech companies i mean just look at the stock values this whole k-shaped recovery is very real um and and was it happened so quickly and has been so pervasive in the past year um but thinking about it in a renaissance it comes at it in a little bit of a different way because while that's going on um so for me, I think I started thinking about this subconsciously when I started my Substack, which I was a little late to the game, but I remember around the new year, and it was, it's been kind of a crazy year, and, and, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna reset things, I'm gonna try some different things, and I'm gonna try the whole Substack thing. I've never done a newsletter, and what I liked about it was just that it's like instant newsletter, right? It's like you can start it up, you get people essentially like, if they subscribe, then they get your content in an email. I like that. And I was like, I'm going to try that. Like, cause I've never started a formal newsletter and that feels pretty good to me. That's a way for me to get to people's inbox and build an audience that way. And as I was thinking about, well, how do I brand this thing? Um, I decided to sort of go back to my, my origins and, and my career, which is I was, a, I started my career as a visual designer, mm -hmm. went to design school, started my career as a, as a graphic designer and so i thought oh, i'm gonna call this david by design and there was a lot of meaning in that because i i'm, I'm in the process of of redesigning my life and, and i like to think of design as an intentional act right you don't just like you plan things and you and you apply intention to them and that's that's what design is like you help shape and so i was like well i'm gonna choose for the image and and um what came to me was a statue of david okay michelangelo Mm -hmm. So I think subconsciously, and even like with that choice, the, the Michelangelo choice, because obviously he's one of the great Renaissance artists, I, I think it was like percolating subconsciously. So fast forward uh, another month or so, I got COVID in between that, that was fun. Um, but then as I started to come back to life and, and poke my head up again, and um, the, wor the world was accelerating once again. and. What I started really noticing was so at the at the point where I was kind of poking my head up again, social audio really began taking off, right? So, um, the three areas of the digital renaissance that that I think where we're seeing this is, is is social audience is the things that we're seeing in tokens and subscriptions, just like that. But I, you know, um, Substack being an example. Mm -hmm. um, and so those were really all catching heat, and I was like, well, this is really interesting. So we're at this moment in time where there's so much is being changed. Um, you're seeing um, creators, you're seeing artists. And I was like, is it another period in time where there was a, this explosion in both art and technology? And oh, by the way, yes, there was. And it also came after a plague. <laughs> and that was the Renaissance. Mm -hmm. You go to your history, Renaissance was born of the Black Plague in Europe. And so here we are. I mean, this is not um, the intensity of the Black Plague, <laughs> but hundreds of years later, we have this pandemic and then you have these massive shifts that are being accelerated, but then you have these advancements in the arts and sciences, today's science is technology. So obviously everything that's going on there, but then you're seeing what's happening in the art world with NFTs. You're seeing the creativity that's happening with creators. Um, I, I think that the, the, the social audio phenomenon is really interesting in that, um, I, know, I know Jason, we were talking about this earlier. It's, it's, it's a little hard to sort of um it, when you kind of dip your toe it's hard to make sense of but then when you actually dig into it it's very similar to when we met which you went back to and what was happening with things like blogging and twitter that democratization and giving people a voice is really happening um on that platform so those three things together um, that's the high level and i'm sure we'll dig into them a little bit more um to me it seems like there is this um just rapid advancement of of creativity technology enabling it um and and things changing and it and it feels a bit renaissance like okay let, let's start with social audio why is it that taking a chat room giving everyone a microphone and hoping they remain polite and orderly is a big deal i think this is literally a, a cacophony of literal noise getting ready to crap all over the internet. I just yeah. don't see it being 
as organized as it is with those early adopters. So I think what you said is true and there's going to be both in the sense of there will be, um, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to illustrate this cause I've seen, I've seen both. So, um, I, uh, jumped on Twitter spaces the other night. Mm-hmm. And so that's being rolled out. And I think April, I think most people will have that. And they're the Twitter is really aggressively going after this after seeing clubhouse. And so I don't know how it happened, but I opened up a room and it was supposed to be for only people that I follow. And then literally within 10 minutes, someone jumped in my room and he mentioned like coming out of a room where there are a bunch of like European footballers, right? Mm -hmm. From all different, actually not just Europe. And they were these 20 something guys and they all followed him. And then they were in my room and there were like literally at least 50 of them and they were the real deal. And they were hitting, you know, raising their hand and just wanting to talk. I was kind of freaked out because it felt like a flash mob, but they ended up being really nice. And they were legit. Like I was asking the questions about you know, soccer slash football, and they were answering and they were nice young, like young guys, like super young guys. It felt like, it felt like Ted Lasso. Um, and so um, there will be moments where, so these guys were bored. I asked while they were on it, they're like, oh, you know, it's a pandemic. There's nothing going on. They were just bored. And there was not much structure to that. But then in the same breath, I've been in rooms on Clubhouse and they've even been in spaces, you know, we've had people like Kara Swisher um, basically opening up on spaces and holding court. Um, and then you've um, you've had Katie Couric, um, and you've had MC Hammer, and you've had all different kinds of um, celebrities on Spaces sort of do things that feel like it could be, uh, sometimes they feel like interviews, sometimes they feel like, um, I think they very much feel like conferences. So, so something that I've written about, and I, and I will hold to this, um, Spaces in particular feels very much like going to a physical event, except it's just virtual. It feels very much like going to South by Southwest. Um, sometimes they feel almost mm, TED Talks, probably not the right format, but it feels very much like going to a panel at any one of these big conferences, Jason, that you and I have gone to over the right. course of our careers. And I have a theory that the monetization can follow that model because, like, when you look at Facebook and Twitter, they have monetized off of the traditional ad model, like literally, like the broadcast ad model. Yeah. Okay. And and they they took that and they just retrofitted it um, for their new purposes. But essentially, it's the advertising model. So so conferences have a different monetization model. Companies pay to play with conferences, right? Like they spend big money on CES or South by Southwest or CAM, any one of these conferences. And there's many many more. Um, they spend big money to show up there. And so the I think that I think that. Um, I don't know for sure, but Clubhouse certainly can monetize in the same way, right? So sponsored clubs, mm -hmm. um, you cover influencers. So thought leaders and influencers are already showing up there and building their audiences. And then there are all different kinds of ways that brands can work with influencers. Oh, so you are the expert in nutrition? Well, we are a food company or we are a nutrition company or we sell, you know, we sell cliff bars. So we partner with the nutritionist and we do something on Clubhouse talking about nutrition or lifestyle, whatever it is. So there's there's a number of ways that I think Clubhouse can monetize that look more like um, an event. And, and I also have a theory that obviously there's a massive opportunity right now because we can't go to physical events. So then lo logical thinking is like, oh, but when events come back, well, yeah. everybody, you know, these things will wither and die. No, it's not gonna happen. It's gonna be the opposite. Hmm. Um, I believe what happens is, and Jason, you have experience here, the, the connections that we get from, from these digital experiences, what they do is they supplement and they actually create demand. So when you're following, you know, uh, people, creators, whatever the case on social audio, uh, or meeting others, because these are networks, especially uh, clubhouse, you're going to want to meet them at some point. Right. So like, you'll be following them through the year. So it's very much that podcast that, you know, the social networking model. And then at some point you run, you're going to want to meet the people that you're meeting as you're following them and you'll meet them in, in the physical world at uh, conferences. So, hmm. okay. Well, I, I still, I have yet to be convinced that it's going to last much once people get back together, but you make a good point there. So we'll see. Um, okay. All right. Second one, NFTs. <laughs> all right. Now NFTs are all the buzz right now. Um, and, and they are part of the token ecosystem. They're akin yeah. to Bitcoin, non fungible tokens. That's a word I'm not never going to like. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, that's what that stands for. So explain to me, David, and talk slow with short syllables, because I think most people hear the description of what an NFT is and think NFT more like WTF. Like, yeah. what the hell are these things and, and how do we use them? It is super confusing, but um, the simplest way to think about them is um, so we now have some non-fungible tokens um, are essentially built on the blockchain, which is decentralized, um, tied to Ethereum. So these are just like the nuts and bolts. Uh, there is a process like through websites where essentially if you can prove that you are the creator of digital art, you can then uh, um, get it converted into an NFT, which it, 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 it is just digital. You don't get anything physical but it basically certifies, the NFT certifies that digital artwork as an original. So even though anyone can actually, um, so the artist um, Beeple that just sold his digital art, right? Mm -hmm. Or I, I don't know what the amount was, but it was millions, okay? Mm -hmm. That was an NFT. So he basically got it minted, certified, and then through Christie's auction, they did bidding and then someone bought it for millions of dollars. Uh, now, you, anyone can take a screen grab of that art. I just did it, put it up on my Facebook page. Anybody can take that, put it, use that as a background because it's digital. Anyone can have a copy of that, but only one person has the original. So you have a couple of schools of thought here. You have uh, definitely people that are saying, well, look, this is just, um, this just mimics the real world of art and collectibles, meaning that there will always be knockoffs, there will always be copies. And even though it's not a physical thing you can hold in your hand, once you get it certified via NFT, that is what creates the value. So you have a lot of people saying like, yes, this thing is viable because it really is not that different from how you know things work. The, the distinction is that it's not a physical thing that you can hold in your hand. Right. Right. So a lot of people are scratching their heads saying like, well, how is it valuable if it's not yeah, totally virtual. Because if I have if I have a copy of the artwork and it's high enough resolution and I can use it as the background on my whatever, uh, it's digitally it's no different than the original. Nobody's yeah. going to understand that you know. Oh, I own the copyright or whatever that means to this. So I don't see how there is value created by putting what is in essence a virtual serial number, uh, you know, or seal of approval on on one piece of digital thing i don't know why that's valuable i still don't understand the concept well, I, again i think the line of thought would be well um i could right now look up a um a photograph or an image of the mona lisa i could print it out on my on my high quality epson printer i could frame it hanging up in my house does it mean that i own the mona lisa no it means that i own a copy so the, the premise of the only only the NF, nft is the original and that's what creates the value is the same. Um, the, the, where things get tricky, I was just looking up yesterday and there was a whole tweet thread of a guy that said that um, he was using one of these wallets, right? And accounts, and like, this is where my knowledge wavers a little bit, right? So I, I've done Coinbase and I understand like the premise of having wallets and I know that Ethereum I think is, is the currency that's used for this, but um, now you're getting into a pretty, crazy crypto world right you have to have wallets and things of that nature and it is pretty unregulated so this guy was talking about how someone broke into his account hacked into his account he had ten thousand dollars they um any of the art that he had used was stolen the nfts that he collected were stolen um and then they were buying they were using his account information to buy and then they're like and like uh, ten thousand dollars worth to, to the point to where he then like had to contact the local police, you know, and do that whole thing. And here's the, the picture, right? Here's the punchline. Nothing you can do. <laughs> well, I can imagine that he's out $10,000. I can imagine this guy walking into the local police department and them going, what, what are you talking about? That's that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, and and so that's, that's the other side. Like it is wild west and you are definitely like, it's like play at your own risk. So, so take, take me through this. Help me understand this piece because I think uh, Kings of Leon is releasing their new album as an NFT. 
I, I don't even know what that means. It, does it mean I can't buy the album? Does it mean only a certain number of people can buy it? Will I even be able to download it and play it on my MP3 player? I have no clue what this album is coming out as an NFT. What does that mean? You know what? I'm not going to sit here and make up, make up. I don't really know either. I, I think it's an experiment. Like, we'll see. I, we, 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 what it possibly could do is give them a level of ownership of the music that we haven't seen before. Now, see, I could, I could see, I could start to see some logical connecting the dots of this is the digital audio file and it can only be duplicated, replicated uh, if you are taking a copy of the original and there is a paper trail or an electronic trail of Bitcoin or whatever that pays us for the usages of any copies of it. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to me because pirating music is something that has been a problem for, for artists for years. Um, and if there's an electronic way for Apple, Spotify, Pandora, or some you know jerk who downloads it off the internet and plays it, and then it sends a signal to the original NFT that says, this is being played by this person, so here's a three cent charge or whatever. Now I start to understand it. But until that sort of revelation popped into my head, I, st I still don't get what yeah. the digital asset is. Look, you and I have been in marketing NPR world and the intersection of the two for a while. Let's also not discount that because NFTs are all the range. Right now, it's a great PR tactic as well, yeah. right? Like, what's a good way to uh, break into culture and to and to show that you're culture relevant is actually do something that's NFT related, so yeah. you get the headlines that go with it. So there's, I think there's some of that going on. I'm not saying that that's the case with this. I don't really know enough about it, but. Let's also not forget that it's a moment in time where you're going to see players actually um, get a headline out of it. I mean, Taco Bell just did a whole like, right? They did the digital art and it was an NFT and mm -hmm. they, they're riding that wave and good for them. Taco yeah. Bell is one of the, Taco Bell is one of those brands that like rides the cultural wave. And so I, w I would expect them to do something like that. But yeah, there, and, there is that as well. And I, and I would I would say that, you know, Kings of Leon hasn't had a relevant album, I don't think in about six, eight, 10 years. So that might yeah. be a smart move for them. And I, I love Kings of Leon. It's no insult to them. They just haven't done a whole lot lately. I don't think, yeah. or I've not been tuned into it. Uh, uh, Brandon Arve says, good morning over here on the chat uh, sections. Chip is, is chiming in here. Uh, NFTs aren't much different from fiat currencies. They have value only if you agree they do. Uh, he yeah. says he believes selling albums with NFTs are like limited editions where you end up being a, in a fan club of something, which, oh, okay, yes. that makes sense. That makes sense. Yes. Um, All right. if, you, if you think about it, uh, this is where people that are really pro um, crypto, any monetary system, like we just happen to use in countries, right? U.S. has a monetary system and that's mainstream. And But it's the same thing. We agree. Like there's a con there's essentially like a government sanctioned contract that a hundred dollar bill is worth a hundred dollars, right? right. It's, it's the same concept. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, the last one, uh, subscription based content. Your newsletter uh, is and where this article is published is sub Substack. Yeah. Um, and I, I have my silly stories uh, on Medium just because I don't have anywhere else to put them. Um, I know there's been some talk of only fans lately because of the mother in some private school, yeah. private school kids got in trouble uh, or the kids got in trouble because she posted something in lingerie or something like that. Tell me why blogs and private content feeds that are essentially stripped down email newsletters are relevant here. This technology did not not exist before a month or two ago, but not, but 99 percent of the people out there with social feeds or newsletters do not produce content that's worth paying for. Why is it we think this is going to be some sort of game changing thing? Because email newsletters are possible. Putting stuff behind a paywall is possible. I don't understand why this is new and revolutionary. Why this subscription model is new and revolutionary? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think that so that example that I had of the 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 mom on OnlyFans and she was making some huge amount. I mean, what was it like one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month? I yeah. mean, that, and I'm sure that that is the exception. But even I, the, the what's happening on that one um, site, for example, I think really kind of distills it. it. It's it, it it's a it's a direct to consumer model. I was on the Joseph Jaffe show the other day and I found myself saying DTC and and direct to community. 
And, and that's actually what the model is. So like in the world of brands, you have direct to consumer. I was just looking at a Colgate uh, direct to consumer site that launched is actually really, you know, done well. I didn't realize how many products they have. And it was, it was, um, you know, they had it showcased well, and it was like skipping the middleman. And so um, things like Substack, things like um, OnlyFans, what's the other one? What's the third one? It starts with a P and I always forget the name. But they're essentially like, it's, 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 a, it's a shift of you going direct to community. The trick is it's only valuable if you have a community that you can build and then go direct to, but yeah. people are doing it. And so what it does is it allows you to now monetize it. So via, via the subscription. So Substack, am I going to monetize it? Probably not, but have journalists begun to? Yes. Yep. Who have, you know, built an audience and maybe they built that with the New York Times or a traditional journalist company, but you've seen them do it with Substack. You've seen just everyday people on OnlyFans do it. And yes, for every person that's not making $150,000 a month, there are probably someone that is making maybe 2000 a month, mm -hmm. you know, and who would normally only make, um, you know, half of that if they were doing a regular job or 3000 right. a month or whatever, whatever it is. So that's a whole new economy that's being created. Well, as, as Chip actually points out over in the comments, um, those sites are only sort of direct to consumer. They don't survive on their own, uh, on their own sites, but only because of the middleman who serves as the publisher processor. So what I think Chip is saying here is, it, these things are always going to be de dependent upon the content creator. My concern is, is this is just another avenue where we're going to say, look, you can create content over here and make money directly from your audience. And that's going to make all these people who don't know how to create content, who the content they create sucks. And, and all of a sudden they're going to crap all over it because they're not making any money and they're going to blame it on Substack, not blame it on the fact that they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, well, sucks is, is is very subjective these days, right? What we're finding out, and I'm sure with some of these fan bases, is like your, I mean, let's use that mom for as an example. Like, who knew that there was a niche, right? Where it was like, like if she's like, if she was shocked when she talks about it. She's like, here I am, I'm this middle aged mom, and she's actually most of her stuff is pretty tasteful, and she's like, there's this whole huge group of people that actually want to see me in certain outfits, like you don't know until I, uh, until you develop the niche and then, and see what people are willing to, to pay for. That's true. Uh, David, uh, thank you so much for spending time with the, with us today. Where can people find and connect with you on the interwebs? A uh, good starting point is always David um, and, uh, email and Twitter for sure at Armano on Twitter. I'm pretty responsive on Twitter. So that's an easy one as well. And also you can find me on clubhouse these days. I've been uh, experimenting and, and pushing myself there a little bit to learn and, and jump in and, and uh, try to produce some value there. Awesome. Well, David, hats off to you, sir. Thanks for coming by the show. Appreciate your time today, man. Thanks, sir. Great to see you, Jason. Good to see you too. David Armano, ladies and gentlemen, how about that? Good to have him on the show. Uh, there he is. And I'll hit the right button now and put me on there. Uh -huh. So David can get on with his day. So good stuff there. Lot, lots of good stuff to think about. I, I'm, I'm going to struggle with NFTs for a while, probably until someone maps it out for me and probably in crayon or something so that I can understand it better. But you know, that's the way things work. Um, so good stuff to think about today. I've dropped the links to uh, David's places over there in the old comments section. So feel free to connect with him if you uh, are not already on the interwebs with David Armato. Okay, if you or someone you know has ever wanted to write their own book, boy, have I got a really nice workshop event for you. And before you zone out thinking I'm trying to sell you something here, the live event that I'm going to tell you about is free. So it's called the Journey to Success Summit. I think I have a URL that I got to throw up here too. So it's called the Journey to Success Summit. It's called Publish, Promote, and Prosper. The event is coming up on March 20th and 21st. So that's just in a few days. All the sessions will be between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. Eastern time uh, in on March 20th and 21st. The whole event is to share with you what works and what doesn't in the world of publishing and promotions in 2021. Essentially, what you can watch live is for free. That's, that's the backstage recording of a publishing mastermind course. Uh, 
So the recordings of the event will be available for a fee after the fact, and you can certainly you know pay for them if you if you're really interested in the content and you can't be there live. But if you come to the event live, you get to watch this mastermind course play out free of charge. Now here's how I'm involved. I've been asked to contribute a talk on leveraging influence marketing to help promote your book. So my piece is kind of on the back end of the publishing process, the promotions of a book. So I'm, but I'm one speaker of there's probably 30 or 40 speakers involved and, and they are, uh, you know, acquisitions editors uh, from publishers. They are publishing agents. They are best selling authors. They are people who have lots of experience in marketing and promoting books. So if you have that interest, uh, this free two day thing, if you watch it live, is going to be extremely useful for you. Uh, uh, listen to the sessions you can learn from in this event. There's one, there's panel discussions on the art of the book proposal. That's the first step. Once you have a book idea, you got to write a really good proposal. It helps to have those acquisitions editors tell you what they're looking for. Insights on what acquisitions editors are looking for is another panel altogether. How an author shapes a book, book marketing and publicity. And that's one room on the first day. There's another room on the, on the first day. And then there's a third, uh, second day with a third room with a bunch more great content in it. I think I'm on, on a panel discussion on the first day and then I'm doing my talk on influencers on the second day. My agent, Gary Krebs, uh, used to be an acquisitions editor at McGraw-Hill. He's one of the hosts and moderators. I'll be on the panel and then speaking about influencers as well. So if you register for this event, uh, you need to register for the event so that you can go there live and see it for free. You go to truelivingsummit.com. Uh, you, and you can certainly buy the mastermind recording after, but why not get it for free? So go to truelivingsummit.com, use my code, uh, which is Jason Falls, my name in regular caps, all one word, Jason Falls, capital J and F, all one word, uh, at truelivingsummit.com when you register so they know that I sent you. Um, the event is March 20th and 21st. I do hope you'll join us. You're going to walk away knowing how to write, pitch, publish, and promote a book, which is... If that's something you're interested in, this is going to be a really good event for you. So truelivingsummit.com, uh, the code there is Jason Falls, all one word, capital J, capital F. So I hope you can come to that. It's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of great speakers. There's there's a lot of stuff to learn there. So there's that. Um, if you are watching or listening to the show after the fact along the C-Suite Network or via one of the video recordings online, remember we typically broadcast this podcast with a live stream to join us live. Just follow me or Cornette on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter, or look for Digging Deeper on YouTube, and you'll get that handy live notification when we stream. Starting next week, that will normally be at 11 a.m. Eastern, 5 a.m. Pacific, I'm sorry, 11 a.m. Eastern, uh, 8 a.m. Pacific, I, as I didn't change that in my script on Tuesday mornings. Uh, look for me online at Jason Falls. You can typically find Cornette at Team Cornette. The Digging Deeper YouTube channel, by the way, let me throw that up there so you can find that. Is it Cornette.online slash Dig Deep? That'll give you a quick link to the YouTube channel where you can subscribe and make sure that you get notifications, A, when we're live, and B, when you can find the recordings of the show if you can't join us uh, live in the, uh, in the recording sessions here on the live streams. So that's the YouTube channel. For those of you uh, 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 watching on the live stream or video replay, you can also subscribe to the audio podcast uh, and never miss an episode. That is at cornet.online slash digging deeper. So spell it all out and you'll get the player and the place where you can subscribe to the audio version of the show. You can also search for Digging Deeper Cornet on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Pandora, or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, uh, oh, I hit the wrong button there. The Digging Deeper uh, URL was supposed to come up, and that's what that is right there. So cornet.online slash digging deeper. For those of you on the video stream, you know, sometimes there's great user error in producing this show because I'm the user. Uh, next week, the show is, again, remember the new start time, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific time, live on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. Next week's guest will be Jeff Hillemare, the CEO of Dragon Army. No, it's not a D&D club. They are a purpose-driven digital engagement company based in Atlanta. They help brands create remarkable products and experiences. We'll find out how and why next week. That will be live on the interwebs on Tuesday, March 23rd at the new time, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, 
If you can't be there live, subscribe to our YouTube channel at cornet.online slash dig deep and watch the replay on demand. Or you can subscribe to the audio feed via podcast cornet.online slash digging deeper. We do hope you can make the transition with us to 11 a.m. Eastern time, 8 a.m. Pacific moving forward. But the show will always be there for you after the fact if you can't either next week or beyond. Uh, Justin Hall jumps in and says he's interested in the, uh, in the author event. He'll check it out. So I appreciate that. And David Armano jumped in the comments on Facebook and said, thanks for having me on the show. Thank you, David, for being with us today. And of course, thanks to Chip for the, uh, comments and whatnot. I would encourage you in the future, if you want to, you know, watch, uh, if you're not seeing Chip's comments, wherever you're watching, you need to go over to the YouTube version, uh, of digging deeper and watch live with Chip because he puts his comments there on YouTube and uh, Chip has a lot of great insights to add to the conversation. I don't always have a chance to read them all, uh, but he he doesn't just troll and, and poke me. He actually participates in here and has some good things to say. So uh, watch the show live on YouTube in the future and you'll experience the full uh, magic of, of what Chip does during the show, which is actually pretty good. So check that out. All right. Everybody knows we've reached the point in the program where I have to figure out which buttons to push to make sure that I can get us out of here and get us to work here on this Tuesday. Uh, this is our last 8 a.m. edition of Digging Deeper. We're moving to 11 a.m. next week, uh, Eastern time, 8 a.m. Pacific time next week. So uh, make sure to mark your calendars and join us live for the show next week. That'll do it for this edition of Digging Deeper, Make Creativity Your Business Advantage. If you liked the episode, share it with a friend or colleague who might as well. Digging Deeper is a production of the Cornette Group. You can find us online at teamcornette.com. Our executive producer is Christy Heiler. The creative director is Jason Pajeski. Associate producer is Ashley Harris. Our theme music is composed by Rex Banner. I'm your host, Jason Falls. Thank you for listening to Digging Deeper. Until next time, I'll see you on the interwebs. <laughs>